G'day YouTube, today we're exploring Shearwater, Port Sorrel and Hawley Beach, which are all kind of the same place, just with three different names. We're in Tasmania, the southernmost state of Australia. Port Sorrel is around an hour's drive from Launceston, up the northwest coast. The towns of Port Sorrel and Hawley Beach neighbour Shearwater. It's basically three little towns in one. They're all connected right next to each other. You can't really tell where one starts and another stops. They all border the Rubicon Estuary, which has been identified by BirdLife International as an important bird area. In 1845, the tide reached the track where we're walking. Sailors would row ashore and have a drink at the Port Sorel Inn, which was just to our left. The inn burnt down in 1866, and then was rebuilt and then closed in 1869. So that's Baker's Beach behind me on the other side of the water. I remember staying there with my parents when I was a kid once. Found this cool shared walkway that goes all the way up the beach. So this whole area was called Panatana by the local Aborigines. The European settlers called it Burgess, but in 1822, it was renamed to Port Sorel in honour of Governor Sorel. Wombat! Before 1860, ships couldn't approach the shore easily here, so they had to bring people and equipment on little rowboats or just wade and carry. There was a big shipwreck here in 1859. Apparently at low tide you can actually see some of the wreckage still. They built a 200 metre jetty to help with the problem. Now, jetties were built right here in 1923 and 1946, but they both got destroyed by storms. This current jetty that I'm standing on was built in 2003. I get this distinct impression that the Joker has been here recently. Oh, that's, I guess what makes it a pontoon. <laughs> no. <laughs> to show you he's here. <laughs> Yes, I see it now. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Something like that. <laughs> you can tell it's spring because suddenly everything's got like flowers growing out of them.
1846, the assistant police magistrate, George Meredith, built a home called Tolliston for his family. That home sat where the current Shearwater Resort resides. Or was that his son Charles? My information is contradictory. His wife, Louisa Ann, designed the garden for the property. She later became famous throughout the colonies in Britain for her botanical illustrations. And this house became home to a whole bunch of police magistrates, including Henry Douglas, who was an advocate for the Anti-Transportation League, and brother of Tasmanian Premier, Sir A. Douglas. Now, Polliston was neglected over the years. By 1884, it was being used as a holiday house and was practically deserted. And when they built the resort in the 1960s, all that was left of the original house was a pear tree. back. Got a nice caravan park right here on the beach. We're gonna find a nice cafe to get some lunch. We found a little cafe called Muse. Linda ordered duck tacos and I ordered a big meaty burger. Muse is also a gift shop. I can definitely recommend Muse at Shearwater. Very nice meal. We found a little shop selling locally made souvenirs and gifts. The lady who ran it was very friendly. Port Sorrel would have become a much larger population centre, but they had some bushfires, and then Devonport started becoming bigger, and it became the primary port of the northwest. But in an alternate universe, you know, Devonport could have been little and this could have been the place. But they're actually going through a bit of a boom at the moment. Uh, I've read because of uh, very low property prices, lots of people are buying up here and building places. Actually, quite a lot of nice houses. Real quick, we want to give a special shout out to Melita Powell, who has been one of our patrons for a few months now. And it really is helping. So thank you very much, Melita, uh, for being a fan and for being a patron. Uh, I believe you came to our last patron live stream, which was a lot of fun. Next one will be next month in December, and so it'll be, have a bit of a Christmas theme. Should be good. But yeah, we, we really appreciate you, Melita, and just the support that you are giving us uh, from month to month. Uh, it's really has helped us through some harder times early this year, and, uh, you know, Patron support is probably going to help us go to some cool places uh, this Christmas holidays over, over January, um, which we probably wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So thank you very much. Uh, if you'd like to be a patron like Melita, then you just need to go to patreon.com slash show and you can learn what it's all about there. <laughs> so we've come up to Hawley Beach, and it's really bushy up this end. So I've been wondering if there's a connection between the short-tailed shearwater, or mutton bird, and this town. Turns out that uh, they come here every year about this time of the year. It's part of their annual migration from the northern hemisphere. Oh, we might even see some. There's an Aboriginal word, Laruma, which means open sea, and that's pretty much what this is. It's right at the mouth um, of the, the port, and this is Bass Strait. 
apparently you can see some Aboriginal relics around here somewhere. But it's very important that you not interfere with them or touch them. It's actually illegal to do so. Might want to take our shoes off at the front door as opposed to in the house. Because it's not my carpet. <laughs> All I can hear is bird song, occasional dog barking, and the crunch of the sand under my feet and the waves. This is nothing else. Gotta love the orange rocks. We stumbled onto a cool bush trail. I reckon that's because they get penguins. Something moving in the bush. Yeah, it's a protective native wildlife habitat. Those are fairy penguins. Linda actually saw a paddy melon jump on across the road when we're driving here. Can you see him? It's a paddy melon. Hi, buddy. Hey, Skippy. <laughs> see ya. Everywhere, little lobbies. So many of them. There's birds up there. I wonder if those are shearwaters. No. There's a turbo chook. Native hem. That was that was a big one. I heard he's yeah. hopping. He's gone now, but yeah, that was a big one. You got a joey? No, just his arm. Yeah. He's a lot calmer than the others. He is. He doesn't really seem bothered by us. He's uh, keeping a very close eye on us, but he's not running away. Hey, buddy. Hi, Skippy. Look at him. He's like, nah, I'm on the other side of the fence. <laughs> hey, buddy. So there's one just sitting right in the middle of the walkway up here. I wonder how close we can get before he hops away. And he's gone. What have they got in there? King Kong? Yeah, mate. Must be getting close to the end of this track because that's the best trace. That's open sea. We're going that way. There you go, we made it. Track ends here. And there's your open sea, that's the best straight.
family out, man. <laughs> How's it going? And that brings us to the end of our first day in Shearwater and Port Sorrel. Stick around because coming very soon will be another episode where we'll continue to explore this interesting area. I know that vlogs have been coming a little slowly lately. The main reason is because I've been trying to write a 50,000 word novel in 30 days during November. It's going pretty well actually, but November is almost over and I'll have a lot more time and energy to devote to the vlog than I've had over this month. So yeah, next time is going to be a continuation of Shearwater and Port Sorrel, and then after that, we're going to take you to an interesting place called Opossum Bay. Should be good, something to look forward to. See you in the next episode of The Comic Show.